So it's the uh, middle of June, around June 20th. It's uh, not even 9 o'clock in the morning, and we're close to 100 degrees. The last three days, we've been 113, 114 degrees. And right now, we are running our solar on off-grid. The EG4 12,000 BTU mini split that's a hybrid direct solar input is running off of those 12 100-watt solar panels that we installed over our garden since we tore our garden out, put them in pots. Um, that one is really impressing me. I can run that thing and on turbo, and it's a 22 sear, and it is using um, less than 900 watts running on turbo on high because it's a 22 sear. So even with it um, using the solar, if I want to at nighttime, I can use grid. And if I ran that thing on high all night long, I'm going to use less than a kilowatt each hour. And, you know, 17 cents, if I were to run that mini split um, 10 hours, that'd be $1.70 to run that mini split for 24 hours. Because during the day for about 12 hours, I could run that, eh, maybe 10 to 12 hours, I could run that off of just the solar without any input but you can also run that on economy mode overnight and drop that down to where you're only using maybe 450 watts for 450 watts and instead of a dollar 70 it might be like 85 cents a day so you could pretty much run that for about 30 35 bucks a month to run a 12,000 btu hybrid mini split and you don't need um, any inverter the, uh, or any battery, the inverter pretty much or charge controller is installed in the outside condenser unit. So it is a fabulous unit to where you can either hardwire it to 110 volts or you can run like a 10, 10, 12 gauge extension cord and plug that into a um, outlet for your grid and run that thing overnight or on cloudy days when there's no solar. But I'm running it off of those 12 100 watt solar panels. You can connect, I think, up to 16 or 1700 watts. But from what I've seen, I don't go over like, I don't think I've even hit 900 watts on turbo on high. Um, so those 1000 watts is being able to get me to where I can use almost 900 watts off of that. And uh, so those are pretty efficient. Those are great 100 watt solar panels. But I could go up to 16, 17. I think it's 1700 watts that you can go up to. The benefit I would have from that is earlier in the morning and later in the afternoon, I'd be able to harvest more uh, power off of those solar panels because I have more solar panels and I'd be able to start it up. I think you need around 160, 190 watts to get that thing to start up and start running the compressor. So you could start it up a little bit earlier in the morning and it'll run a little bit later. And at that point, you could pretty much run it almost 12 hours if you had the full 1,700 watts where you're running 12, 12 hours on solar or actually 12 hours for free off your solar panels and then 12 hours on grid. And like I said, you could probably do that for... If it's 17 cents an hour like it is out here, you could probably do it for about 30 bucks a month is what you would use. And that could do about a 550, 6, 650 square foot room or area that you could use that. I run it in my garage as a three car garage and it's pretty close to um, 600 square feet, uh, maybe like 550. So it does a really good job out there. But, you know, the better the insulated room, the better it's going to do. Uh, if you put that into a very uninsulated, um, like a garage that's just a two by four and there's no drywall on it and it's not insulated and the garage door is metal and the sun's shining on it, you're not going to get the results you think you should. <laughs> it's still going to do a good job cooling, but it's not going to, you know, it might get you down into the 75 to 85 degree range, but I can get my garage down to like in the 60s. So, cause it's well insulated. But right now, we are running our three-and-a-half-ton upstairs on our off-grid solar system. 
we are running our two 12,000 BTU mini splits, an aux brand and a premium brand on the off-grid system, cooling our upstairs and downstairs that's 2450 square feet. I'll show you, we've got a two-story house and those two 12,000 BTU mini splits running on the off-grid. There's upstairs and downstairs. I mean, it's a 2450 square foot house. You can see it's a good size house. And that is running just off grid. There's no grid power being used right now to run that air conditioning. And the one thing I like about these mini splits, they are extremely quiet. Um, right now I've got two of those running and you can't even hear them. So there's the other side. Here's the living room mini split right here. This is a premium brand. I don't know if you can hear it, but all you hear is the fan on that thing. So that runs into the living rooms right there. This is the west wall and it does an excellent job, even though it's the west wall and it's, if I shine a temperature gun, it'll be about 180, 190 degrees at three in the afternoon until the sun sets on that thing. So pretty, uh, pretty nice. I'll show you the other 12,000 BT over here that's downstairs running and you can barely even hear it. There's the aux brand. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but they're very, very quiet. Not like the three and a half ton or four ton heat pumps. Upstairs, downstairs, we run that thing 24 hours a day on off-grid solar and battery bank at night. So we don't use really any grid power uh, unless we want to. On some of the hot days, like 113 or above, sometimes I'll turn it on for like 20 minutes twice a day at like noon and 6 o'clock just to kind of get it cool. But right now... It's 75 degrees in the house. We have, there's the aux brand. I just showed you that mini split over on the side here. That's set 73. You can actually set that down to 768. That's running on off grid right now. So, and over here, it is 74 degrees. And that's the premium one that I showed you outside on the west side of the house. Uh, that thing is kicking out some cold air. So what I do is I turn on my um, ceiling fan here and I have it sucking the air up so it goes upstairs. And it does a really good job. Right now I've got to set it 75 upstairs and the air conditioner is not even running. But it's about 90, 92 degrees outside. So there's the uh, EG4 12,000 BTU mini split. I can't set it 61 degrees here. And then there's my off-grid system. Whoops, I got 12 inverters. These are not hooked up right now. But I have 12 inverters and they're not even, this is 35%, 35%, 37%, 65%. Thirty-eight percent and sixty-five percent. Oh, that, I'm sorry. That's the charging on this one. It's at sixty-five percent. It was down to fifty-one this morning. Uh, it was actually like fifty-nine when I got up at five, and I um, put on that aux twelve thousand BTU that blows into our kitchen at five o'clock in the morning. So it dropped it down to about fifty-one from fifty-nine. And now it's back up to 65 and it is charging at, what is that? 5.3 volts on each one of our batteries. We have seven batteries. So it's charging at um, five amps right now, 5.3 amps. So it's not even nine o'clock yet right now. And we're, air conditioning our garage and 
the uh, upstairs and downstairs. 2,450 square feet inside, almost 600 uh, square feet out here in the garage. You can see there's where one car is, the other car, and then the tandem would be the other. You could park another one there. Um, but it's about 550 square feet in here. The other thing I do is I have these Ryobi fans right here that are on my garage door opener. I run those. Those are actually on the grid, but they really don't use that much. I don't know, maybe like 15, 20 watts running those each per hour. And I run them during the day to blow the cold air this way because the cold air goes out this way. So it's got to be sucked back in this way. So I kind of blow it into this corner. Now, at around 10, 1030, this is an 18,000 BTU Hessier. I'll turn that thing on and I'll set that at 61 on turbo. And I'll have that one set at 61, the EG4 and this one. And that'll be three ton of air conditioning for this 550 square foot. It'll get it down to 60, 62 to 66 degrees by noon. <laughs> So if I want to come out here and work in the garage, it'll be freezing out here. So that's the nice thing about running the off-grid solar. You can actually set your temperatures. Now, in here, like I said, I'm running this uh, mini split right here on the off-grid, and I'm running that mini split down there on the off-grid. But here's my thermostat for my four-ton. I can turn both of those off and run this off grid as well and so i can run my three and a half ton upstairs and my four ton downstairs if i really want to but these two mini splits 12,000 btu mini splits do an excellent job in here so they'll use half the amount of watts as the four ton and keep it around 72 74 degrees in here for free not cost me anything so then instead of running the four ton and turning these off, I can run that 18,000 BTU and cool that off. Now there's three bedrooms above that garage. So it, it's to the benefit to cool that off. And then the wife comes home around 345, pulls a car that's been out in the sun all day into the garage and closes the garage door. And when that thing's like 62, 66 degrees, by six o'clock, that engine and that car is completely cooled off from that cold. And it's about 70, 72 degrees out in the garage when I turn the mini splits off out in the garage. So very efficient. Um, that EG4 12,000 BTU is probably my favorite uh, because there's no special tools involved with that. You just have to have regular tools you would have around the house. Pretty much a, a Phillips screwdriver, a drill, a three inch hole saw, um, and um, two pairs of channel locks or, I wouldn't use pliers, I'd use channel locks um, or wrenches. But uh, no special tools needed, no, no uh, vacuum pump or gauges needed to install that thing. That is really nice not having to um, get to that expense. And it's a DIY install, so pretty much anyone can do that DIY. Um, I'll put a link in the description and also a coupon code for $50 off of a purchase of $500 or more. And you can use that if you decide you want to purchase one of those. Like I was saying earlier, you can run that thing off of solar during the day and then um, run it off the grid at night. Now, what I did in my garage a couple of times was I took a 12 volt, 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. I put that thing on evaporative mode. It was blowing out 52 to 54 degree air all night long and it used, on a one 12-volt, 280-amp-hour battery, I had 36% of the battery left. I can go down to 20%. I had 36% of the battery left after running it for 14 or, it's either 14 or 16 hours. And 
that garage was 10 to 12 degrees cooler than if I didn't run any air conditioning at all. So I could run that overnight and that's a 550 square foot room. I could easily run that in a bedroom that's only like 200 uh, square feet um, and probably uh, you would use maybe three kilowatt hours running that thing overnight if it was um, connected to your grid power to run overnight for 12 hours. Um, you'd probably use around, uh, you'd be able to run it for on an evaporative mode. You could run that thing for about five hours for one kilowatt. And out here right now, it's 17 cents a kilowatt. So I could run that thing for five hours on evaporative mode for 17 cents. And then, you know, if you run that thing for like um, 12 hours, you're talking about less than 50 cents to run that thing overnight on evaporative mode. And it'll be blowing out 52 to 54 degree air. So very efficient. I can't get my other mini splits to do that. They will not run that low. The maybe go down to like 350 to 500. Um, but then they'll jack back up to around close to 1,000 or 1,200 watts. And they'll cycle up and cycle down as the room cools off. And then it, it calls for it not needing to cool anymore. So it'll slow it down and reduce the watts. But that AG4 is just insanely efficient. So I'll put, like I said, I'll put a, a coupon code and a link in there. And use that coupon code to get $50 off of anything at Signature Solar Um it's $500 on a purchase or more. So um, if you have any questions, comments, don't hesitate to ask. Um, like I said, that one is a easy one. The other mini splits that I installed, I had to um, hook up a vacuum pump, pull a vacuum on it, then let it sit. And then um, that took a couple hours. And then I had to put gauges on it and... Uh, check and see, like, well, when I ran the vacuum pump, I could see with the gauges. But um, so with that EG4, you don't have to go out and buy that special equipment, the gauges and vacuum pump. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I hope you have a truly wonderful and extremely cool and blessed day. See you in the next video.